Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Big victory for Glenn Beck, and that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. Hundreds of thousands of people attended the Restoring Honor rally in Washington on Saturday, where Glenn Beck, Sarah Palin, and others appealed for a return to Judeo-Christian values. We must be better than what we've allowed ourselves to become. We must get the poison of hatred out of us. No matter what anyone may say or do, no matter what anyone smears or lies or throws our way or to any American's way, we must look to God and look to love. We will always come through. We will never give up and we shall endure because we live by that moral strength that we call grace. Because though we've often skirted a precipice, a providential hand has always guided us to a better future. Now, as Beck advertised, the rally was mostly non-political and entirely peaceful, a vast crowd, respectful, and honored itself by demonstrating love of country. Again, this was a huge victory for Glenn Beck and Americans who believe that his message of honor and dignity is worthwhile. But the forces opposed to Beck viciously attacked him. New York Times columnists Bob Herbert and Charles Blow implied Beck is a racist, shaming themselves in the process. It's fine to disagree with Glenn Beck, but to attack him personally is disgraceful. And anyone who does that should be branded a hater. Are you hearing me, Howard Dean? I think Glenn Beck has got a few things the matter with him up here and up in the head there. So I, I just don't know what to make of it. What I see is these folks are kind of, and I don't mean this in, in, a, in a mean kind of way, but they're a little like lost souls in the sense that they really do, they're, they're at sea. Uh, the country's changed a lot. They don't, they're in the middle of a horrible economic downturn, which has probably affected a lot of them personally. So they follow this guy who is like Father Coughlin uh, from well, the 1930s. Hold, He's a hold, hold on a second. He's a Howard, Howard. Hate that kind of stuff is simply unacceptable, and Dean should be ashamed of himself. Of course, he isn't. All fair-minded Americans should respect people with whom they disagree if the person is honest and sincere, and sincere in the debate. And Glenn Beck is certainly that. But we live in a time where boundaries have been obliterated because the liberal media has lost control of the journalistic process, and they are now lashing out against those who have been overwhelming them like talk radio, like the Fox News Channel. Could one liberal in this country have generated hundreds of thousands of people to Washington? The answer is no. The truth is that Glenn Beck urged Americans to come to that rally. That encouraged spirituality and honesty and was attacked for doing it. And that's a memo. Now, for the top story tonight, here he is, the Beckmeister. All right, congratulations right, to you. Sir. Thank you. you. Know? In hindsight, I want to know what you thought was the best moment in a rally and the worst moment not just in a rally, but of the whole experience. Let's start with the best. Uh, best moment in the rally may have been private moments. Um, uh, a moment of uh, praying with Alveda King. Uh, a moment um, with a father and son at the, um, at the line at the front before the rally started and talking to them. And I have a picture of it. It's unbelievable of this father and son. And the son is just beaming and the father's head is up next to his and he's crying. How old is the son? Uh, son's probably about eight or ten. And that's glenbeck.com, these pictures around? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the, the personal response that you got from the folks there was the highlight. What was the low light? Um, the, the hate from the other side. Okay. What do you think is generating that hate? Fear? Ignorance and fear, probably. Um, ignorance on, uh, on some, because they don't, they just, they read the New York Times. But those aren't the people they... generating the attacks. The attacks are oh, being the attacks generated are... by the people who well know what you oh, do and who yeah. you no, are. No, no, the attacks, and, and I warn you, America, the attacks are going to get worse. Yeah, they will. And not just on me, but um, the Black Robe Regiment uh, was uh, introduced on stage, which is, was 240 pastors, priests, rabbis, and imams on stage, all locked arms, saying the principles of America need to be taught and from the pulpit. All right, but let's, um, let's get into the, that a little bit. They're going to be, the attacks are going to go up. Okay, but we'll defend you, Beck. I have your back, and I'm not saying I that know. facetiously. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm basically, you, you put yourself out there, and I agree with some stuff you say, I disagree with others, but I'm going to defend you. 
and the Howard Deans of the world are going to take it here when they do that kind of garbage. So you don't have to worry about that. You just do what you do. Now, let's talk about the theocratic theme of the event. So there's, do you think America should be run with a Judeo-Christian model of behavior? Is that what you want in the halls of power? That's what we've... Well, no, we had for, it at for, one time. For, for, for we our did behavior? have it. Yes. Does that mean that I want, for, for instance, I've gotten in a lot of trouble for saying, if my church is teaching social justice the way Jeremiah Wright teaches social justice, leave your church. Um, let me say the same thing. If my church started to preach who to vote for, all oh, the Republicans are better than the Democrats or vice versa, I would also leave my church on that. Teach people correct principles that all rights come from God. Yeah, but then you're getting into a theocratic state because no, no, no. there no. are 17, 18 percent of the population don't believe in God. That's okay. American population. That's okay. But you can live by the golden rule. You can live but some by the Ten don't Commandments. Want to. Well, they don't want to live by the golden rule. They want to get stoned every read day. The second, read the second uh, inaugural address. This is incompatible with, uh, with, uh, with anything else but... Um, Judeo-Christian values so or you say, a self-governed people. That, that atheists and people who don't believe in the Judeo-Christian No, look, I, I have a good friend who's atheist. Uh, Sean, uh, um, uh, I think it's Sean Penn. Boy, that's... Uh, Penn Jillette. We don't hang out with each other, but we respect each other. He is an atheist. He understands self-regulation. Atheists can self-regulate. So, right, so you want the, the country and the politicians who represent the country to espouse the Ten Commandments? Self-regulation. But what does that mean? What does that mean? It, it, it means that you don't need, you're not doing things because of penalty from a government. You're doing things because the set of values that you have, the Judeo-Christian values, move you and motivate you to do better. Okay, so does it come down to treating your brother as you would treat yourself, yes. your brother and sister? Yes. Okay, so it comes down to that. Yes. But there isn't a theological component no, to look, it. There isn't why, a right God why, or a wrong no, God. that's why I had all of pastors, priests, rabbis, right. no, you, and had, you had everybody up there. You had, had Albert Pujols, the St. Louis Cardinal guy up <laughs> yeah, there. We had him together. I, was, I said, Albert, hit him with the bat. Will you <laughs> shut him up? <laughs> all right, now, let's get into the race thing real quick. You said something on Fox News Sunday with Chris Wallace about you calling Obama a racist. It was interesting. Roll the tape. First of all, it shouldn't have been said. It was poorly said. It was, I, I have a big fat mouth sometimes and I say things and that's just not the way people should behave. Um, and it was not accurate. Well, I'm glad you said that because that's what they're calling you, a racist. They, you right. know, they're calling you this, that, and the other thing. I want you to understand that the, the rest of that sentence is... It's a shallow understanding of President Obama. President Obama's actions, and that's what I was judging him on, his actions, his actions are really based in liberation theology. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a social justice guy. I thought that was a the mistake, and I, and I told yeah. you that. Yeah, I know. Again. Well, the final thing I want to say is the reason that you got so many people out there was because of the Bold Fresh Tour. Because it, half the tour was I mean, you telling people to get out This there. is the thing. This is the thing. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly said to me, last time I was on, last week, he said, you might have 20,000 people. or I said, 20,000 people? Are you kidding me? And he said, you might have it. I said to him, we'll have more than, we'll than 20,000 people there. This yeah, is, but you this airbrushed is for your wallet. that. No, this is that, for your wallet. It's my wallet. This yeah, is for my your wallet. wallet's that big. Right? And here's what let he me, said. Here's, show that. Look, here's what he said. You airbrushed that. Here's what he said. <laughs> here's what he said. You should, if you get over 100,000 people, I'm hitting them with you this. should do the O'Reilly factor. You can do it anytime you want. You know, I'll take your dopey right. time slot at five. When we come back, <laughs> Al Sharpton. That's right. Sharpton is going <laughs> to reply to you, and that should be interesting. But once again, I want to congratulate you. Thank you, sir. I don't think there's anybody in the country that could have mobilized that many people at this point in time. I, I don't think there's anybody else. Thank you know, you, beside sir. Pamela Anderson. She might have been well, able to do it, but... I don't... You know, no, no, you don't think so? No. Okay, uh -huh. well, I'll cross her up my list. Glenn Beck, everybody.